Um, I wanted to switch gears and um, you touched on adhesion and fibrosis and, you know, this is such a, a big part of my practice um, and chronic pain presentations. A lot of people are, are dealing with um, chronic fibrotic change within their soft tissues in their body. So we see adhesion forming between muscles and connective tissues. And the big one is that it, it catches nerves and, and nerves get stuck and it's just such a big problem. I find that it, adhesion as a descriptive term is a bit polarizing. Some people want to say it, it just doesn't exist and there's a whole spectrum of, of where we exist, but it's very clear in the research, depending on the term that's used, we can sometimes call it fibrosis, sometimes it's scar tissue. Um, I'm going to call it adhesion just because I it, it sticks things together and it's the most most relevant but I'd love to get your perspective as someone that has practiced as a chiropractor and an osteopath, but now, you know, you're really focused and, and a, a leader in functional medicine immunology, but from your side of the fence, what is adhesion and why do we get it? It's, it's a tough, it's a tough question to answer because as chiropractors and osteopaths, right, we sort of, we're, we're, we're told over four years that adhesion is just an in, in, injury to tissues and they're just sticking together. And that's all we're really told. Um, and so it's almost like we have to break down what we've been taught in, in school and in college for four years, right? And sort of figure out, well, there are actually other things in play. And then we go into practice and we sort of get these clients that don't actually get better when we sort of fix, or when we try and fix them, when we're trying to fix their adhesions by working on soft tissues, working on, on misaligned joints, misaligned muscles. And so we work on these things, but some people don't get better. And so what we're now seeing now is that, that there's multiple components to an adhesive process. One is, yes, tissue injury, and one is like chronic inflammation. But once we understand that there's might be some chronic inflammation in, 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 in the body, we have to understand that just saying inflammation is not enough. We have to understand what, in, what is inflammation, what is actually inflammation. And we have inflammation going on right now between us. And so and we have what's called acute inflammation going on. We're breaking down tissues all the time and we're, and we're remo remodeling our tissues all the time. And that's part of a, a normal acute inflammatory process. Um, and, as we, and that's run by your immune system. So we never ask questions from our clients about the immune system. We never do. And I, as a chiropractor, osteopath, we never do. But there were some clients that would never get better, and then some clients that actually would actually get worse when you did some soft tissue work. They would actually get worse, and so this is when we're sort of understanding there's some sort of underlying inflammatory process going on with these clients, and this is run by the immune system, and so, and healing is also run by the immune system. So, when you get an acute inflammatory process like an injury, you you have to create inflammation to kill bacteria, to kill certain viruses, to to remodel the tissue. But then you need the second part of that. You actually need to heal from that inflammation. And that is also run by your immune system. And so it's a balance, it's a balance between driving inflammation, but also healing at the same time. And when we get in balance in that immune process, when we get in balance in that remodeling, we can actually get fibrosis. We can actually get scar tissue. Uh, and we can actually sort of not heal properly. And there's various ways why that happens. Um, and some of it's to do with lack of oxygen some of it is to do with your immune type um and some of it is because we have infections within our tissues um when we have an injury when we have infections and those infections are causing breakdown of tissue scarring of tissue as well fibrosis and so we now know that fibrosis there's an immune component to fibrosis and so why do some people get more fibrosis than other people sometimes we have to look in their history and sort of say do they have underlying immune problems from the past how many clients are we seeing nowadays that have autoimmune processes going on? Thyro Hashimoto's thyroiditis, Crohn's disease, psoriasis, that we think is just happening in their thyroid, just happening in their skin. But it's not. It's happening everywhere in the body. And so this is why we're sort of seeing a lot more of those clients who have more fibrosis have tend to have a lot more immune issues from their past that they've unresolved. And so that's why they're getting sort of nerve entrapments, fibrosis, and tissue, et cetera. It's actually your improper healing response run by the immune system. The immune system is driven towards fibrosis. Um, and so you almost have to retrain your immune system to stop it going into fibrosis. It's um, interesting because I think one of the main aspects that I've sort of looked at traditionally as a, a cause of this would be mechanical load or you know under recovery, that sort of thing. You touched on lack of oxygen. So things like really poor postures for a long time, slouched and slumped in a chair, decreasing blood flow, that sort of thing. Um, but 
it sounds like what you're saying is that people that maybe present that have a really complex history that have perhaps got some features of sort of autoimmune stuff going on, meaning they've got some immune system dysregulation are much more likely to also be presenting with a whole host of uh, fibrotic type issues throughout the body. That's, that's correct. And, and, um, and so we look, and so, but do we ask about as, as our surpasses Kairos, do we ask about what is immune? Uh, system are we are we allowed to ask about people's immune system processes right because it's always when we talk about autoimmunity that's always been seen in, in the medical field only 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 medical doctors can sort of uh, talk about that but it's it's on us it's our responsibility to start asking questions of our clients but we're dealing with the inflammation we're dealing with inflammatory tissues fibrotic tissues which is caused by inflammation inflammation is caused by your immune system and so you have to ask questions now of your clients about the immune system uh, nowadays that we never used to as chiropractors five, six years ago. But we now start to ask a few more questions about someone's immune system problems. Um, and so you have to, in order to get people who are stuck in chronic inflammation. When you're stuck in chronic inflammation, you're stuck in a chronic immune problem. That's that's why you're stuck in a chronic inflammation for part here. And then when you're stuck in those chronic immune problems, that's when you start to get adhesions. That's when you start to get fibrotic tissue. That's when you start to get improper healing going on. And so that's 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 the link there between what's going on. And there's a few underlying things there. One is infections, and the other is, is hypoxia, like lack of oxygen, because you need oxygen in order to sort of fuel uh, a healing process. Um, and another is also metabolic syndrome, blood sugar disorders, so those sort of things, stress environmental stresses, emotional stresses, these will all come into play when it comes to why do people get fibrotic lesions. And so we have to address all those things, um, but primarily it's the immune system. And is, is this more of an issue now, do you think, because of what we've been through in the last few years, where you know, if, if it is sort of stealth infections that play a role in this and people developing these problems, has that been ramped up because of what people's immune systems have kind of been subjected to in the last few years? For sure, for sure. And, and, and so we're understanding a lot more of this. We've learned more about the immune system and infections over the last few years than we have in the last 30 years before then, um, because there's an acceleration of trying to understand why are people, why, why do we all of a sudden have a pandemic of autoimmunity post-vaccination? And you're going to see a lot of your clients when they come in, they're going to say, you know what, I haven't felt this bad in forever. It's only since I got the vaccination that I realized that I just started to feel really bad about this. Or only since I had an infection that I start to feel really bad about this. And so whenever you have an infection, you have an immune problem. When you have an immune problem, you have an inflammation problem. When you're stuck in that chronic inflammation, you get fibrosis and you get the And so, yes, we are seeing a lot more these days because of what's going on in the last few years. But we have to understand is that what do infections do? What is it that infections do? Why do they actually break down tissue? And so when we talk about viruses, for instance, viruses cannot live you don't exist unless they get inside your cells. Viruses have to get inside the cells in order to live. And they live off your mitochondria, they live off your DNA, in order to replicate, in order to survive. Now, the only way that the virus can get from the outside to the inside of your tissues is by breaking down the tissues, by breaking down what's called proteases. They secrete proteases, uh, which is an enzyme that breaks down protein. We might have heard of amylase, which is our digestive enzymes that help break down carbohydrates. We might have heard of lipases that break down fat. Proteases are the enzymes that we secrete, but also viruses secrete as well, to break down protein. And so these viruses secrete proteases to get inside your cell to avoid your immune system. So the way they get inside your cell is because they're trying to avoid your immune system, trying to avoid getting killed. And so they have to break down tissue to get inside your cell. And they break down collagen, break down proteins to do that, which is what we're seeing with nerves, what we're seeing with muscle tissue, because it's all protein, what we're seeing with the gut lining, because it's protein. And so this is why we're seeing a lot of breakdown of tissue, especially post vax We're getting an influx of viruses, influx of protein, spike proteins, which is breaking down your tissue. And so this is what we're seeing. Um, and so sometimes when we have more infection than we do healing, and so when we have a high inflammatory state, then we do a healing state. That's when you start healing with adhesions. That's when you start to get your tissues start to get too sticky. And that's when you don't heal properly. And that's when you get scar tissues and healing. When we have a, a high catabolic process caused by infections, then we do a healing process caused by um, factors that heal like fibroblasts. So that's it. And so that's when we're getting that imbalance and healing and breakdown.
There, there was a study um, fairly recently, and I'll I'll link it in the the mm. notes to this. But it, um, it was called progressive multifocal fibrosing neuropathy. Um, but it was basically the authors were describing what they thought was a, a new type of fibrosing problem, basically because what they were finding was that there were um, two cases of patients that had um, progressive nerve entrapment with fibrotic um, adhesions around different nerves. And there was no real explained cause for this. And they cancelled out all of the things that are traditionally known to cause this. So they basically did all the blood work. They said there was no uh, inflammatory markers that were that were noted. I think they actually did some, because they surgically released these nerves. They tested some of the tissue there and there was no inflammatory markers in there, I believe. One of the patients had Raynaud's phenomenon, but they were otherwise fairly fairly healthy, I believe. But so th they were getting these nerve entrapments and they were presenting with one problem and then another one and another one and in almost in different regions of the body. Um, and where they were getting them were not unusual. It's the sort of stuff that I would treat. But, you know, this was being described as a, as a novel um, problem because there was no other way to, to label it. In your thoughts, you know, and what we're talking about, could this potentially be, you know, a, a case where the patient has some immune system dysregulation? They're developing adhesion around peripheral nerves at a rate that's just way faster than what, what would be normal. Um, but they're not actually flagging any other sort of tests traditionally that we would draw on to, to put that in a category. Would that sort of make sense? Does make sense, and what used to be called as idiopathic, right? We, 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 all these diagnoses, like what you're talking about, used to be described as idi idiopathic arthritis or idiopathic neuropathy, or unknown, unknown origin of disease. Uh, but what was under um, underneath these diagnoses, they're now called novel, right? They're now called different. All these, this is different rather than idiopathic. And so it's just a different way of describing. I don't know what's going on here, but it's different from what we said before. Um, but in, it, it's described this again. I mean. Certain infections love nerve tissue. Certain infections love to embed themselves in fat. And viruses is this kind of so, infection that likes to embed themselves in fat because it's, they insulate themselves with the fat tissue to insulate them from your immune system to stop them from being attacked. And so this is why you see a lot of old viral reactivations are actually happening where they actually happen in your nerve tissue. And so this is because viruses love to embed themselves in fat and you have fat like with swan cells around your nerve tissue. And this is why, this is where viruses hang out. This is why sometimes when you do some nerve entrapment work, sometimes you reactivate an old virus because they're actually in your nerve tissue. We're also seeing uh, viruses within fascia. We're also seeing viruses within your uh, discs, in your intervertebral discs. We're also seeing viruses within your bone tissue. And this is why you're not seeing these, these inflammatory markers in your blood because the problem is not in the blood anymore. And so your viruses, they come inside side your blood and then they leave the blood very quickly to get inside your tissues because they're secreting these proteases to get out of your blood into your tissues. And so this is why you can test your blood, but your viruses aren't in your blood anymore. They don't live in your blood viruses. They actually live in your tissues. And so this is why you don't see these things. You don't see inflammatory markers in blood. Um, inflammatory markers in blood are called acute phase reactants. They only happen within the first 24, 48 hours of an inflammatory event that you get these markers in your blood. This is why your C-reactive protein your, and your uh, erythroacetic mutation rate, the ESR, doesn't always show high all the time because it's momentary inflammation inside the blood. Um, but when we talk about shingles, when we talk about Raynaud's, you talk about Raynaud's, yes? And Raynaud's is, is, is what is seen as a hypoxia of, of, of nerve tissue. It's also nerves or viruses getting inside your nerve tissue as well. So shingles is basically a Raynaud's of your thoracic nerves. Um, and so they're called different things depending on where they present. And so, and so Raynaud might be in your peripheral joints and shingles might be in your nerves or in your in between your sort of uh, thoracic caves and stuff like that. When we see MS of the brain, there's viruses of, of, of the brain tissue. Uh, when we see Bell's palsy, it's viruses within your facial nerve in, 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 uh, in the brain, in, 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 in the cranial nerves. And so this is where you get different diagnoses, but it's the same underlying problem of nerves getting inside your, or viruses getting inside your nerve tissue. And so this is where, uh, yes, you're quite right, is that, is that we have to look at 
stealth infections. The reason why they call it stealth infections is because you don't see them in blood. They're actually inside your nerve tissue. And so this is where you have to put them off your breast and vocal pads when you're dealing with your peripheral neuropathies um, and chronic sort of nerve entrapment. And even sciatica, that type of thing, is, is now sort of seen as an immune problem. Um, and so even low back pain is seen as an autoimmune problem in some cases. Um, and so you have to look at the immune system so the blood or stealth infection to figure out what's going on. Um, these, these stealth infections like viruses, you never get rid of them. You never get rid of viral infection. When you have them as a, as a two-year-old, when you get sort of um, chicken pox as a two-year-old, you always have that virus within you. And it's, just, and it's inside your tissues. And these tissues get reactivated under stress. They get reactivated under inflammation. They get reactivated under COVID. They get reactivated under vaccination, these types of things. And so this is where you look at someone's history and you figure out, do they have a viral load? Yes, they do. And, and sometimes you have to go after that and you get through some of these fibrotic yeah. patients. And that's like hypoxia. Yeah, on the history piece, so I had a patient mm -hmm. lately that um, we've been working through some, some sciatic type um, symptoms for him and he did, does ha have a bunch of nerve entrapment throughout the the course of the sciatic nerve in his leg and, and we've had a, a fair bit of improvement with that he's got excellent function now but he still does get intermittent symptoms that don't seem to be explained well by mechanical load um, and and it, it's just a bit all over the place very frustrating for him it, it, it's been it's proven a little bit hard to nail that down in a clinical sense um, one thing that triggered to me lately is that um, he did have a shingles vaccine that was recommended by his GP. And one thing that he mentioned to me is that his symptoms in his leg just blew up um, around following that um, vaccine and, and almost remained at a, a heightened level there for a while as well. Um, I guess that's probably something that fits with what you're talking about, but in a case like that, are there, are there questions that you could ask of that patient to establish, you know, if their history piece is, is quite relevant? Like what are the things that would stand out to make you really want to, you know, think more about the immune system for someone like that? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a good question. It's like, like, how do you figure these things out as a chiropractor, as an expert, as a hands-on specialist, right? What are the sort of questions you can ask? Because you can't get the testing. You can't sort of look at sort of blood tests or sometimes, sometimes you can't refer blood tests out or you can't see what's going on. And so there's certain clues in your body that your immune system is actually in play. And there's, and there's two parts of the immune system. There's your innate immune system, which, you, which is going on right now. We're, we're killing cells right now. We're killing infections as we speak, but we're not getting any symptoms of that because you don't get any symptoms associated with your innate immune system, your, your inbuilt immune system. You have, then have a, what's called an acquired immune system, which only comes out under stress. You have an acquired immune system, which goes after pathogens that your innate immune system can't take care of. And so it's almost like a pathogen load when you get, when you get an old virus that's in your body, and then all of a sudden you get a vaccination coming or, or, or a new uh, chicken pox vaccine or a new infection coming up. All of a sudden you have what's called a pathogen load, which your innate immune system can't deal with. And that's when you need your acquired immune system, your, your, your stress immune system, your, your SAS forces to need to come in and help you out. And that's what your acquired immune system does. And the difference between the native immune system and your acquired immune system is that when you're in an acquired immune system state, your body tells you that you're in an acquired immune system state. There are certain symptoms that go on with you that tells you that your immune system is being activated. One of those things is allergies. And so people walk around with allergies all the time thinking, oh, I just had allergies. They said there's nothing wrong with them. But allergies is actually an immune response, an acquired immune response that tells you that there's something going on with you, that your immune system is fighting something. It's not the allergy. Allergy is just a symptom. But the underneath that is that your immune system is an acquired immune state fighting, fighting uh, an infection. And therefore, you have to go after them. Taking anti-allergy medication is not going after the underlying infection. Another symptom might be what's called mast cell activation syndrome, where you get redness of the face, histamine reactions, you get itchy skin all the time, you get uh, uh, sort of red face after alcohol, or you go out in the sunshine, you get hives, you get itchiness on the skin. And so that lets you know that that's, that's a different immune response than allergies. And so there are different immune responses depending on, on the type of person you are, the type of genes that you have, the type of damage process that's going on. Um, there's other things where you can get autoimmune reactions, that's another immune response. There's another thing where you can get fevers and you get hot and sweaty. That's another immune response. And so those are symptoms that you shouldn't ignore those symptoms 
and thinking, oh, I'll, I'll just take some pain medication, I'll just take some allergy medication, I'll just take some antihistamine, uh, and I'll be fine. No, it, it sort of clues that there's something more inflammatory going on underneath the surface, like an stomach infection, like stress, like a toxin, like mold, like viruses, like candida. That's going on. And if you don't take care of those things, it's going to present itself later as something big, something more serious, something more inflammatory, possibly an autoimmune reaction, possibly cancer that might sort of present the longer you don't deal with these problems. And so the biggest clue is, uh, is that don't ignore those allergy symptoms. Don't ignore, ignore those client symptoms. Don't ignore IBS or gut problems or irritable bowel syndrome. Don't ignore fevers. It lets you know that you have an infection below the surface that you have to deal with. There's, um, there's another type of patient that I can think of as well that you see every now and then. Um, and sometimes they'll they'll present with an MRI or a, an X-ray and the scan of the spine for a 30 to 40 perhaps year old person sometimes looks like they're 80. Uh, it's, it's a very disproportionate amount of degeneration to the age. Would that also potentially fit in this type of a, you know, breaking down tissues too soon, immune system overdrive type situation? Yeah, exactly. And so you, your immune system can either be catabolic where it's breaking things down or it can be anabolic where it's building things up too much, right? And so fibrosis, scar tissue, lipomas, cancers are more of an anabolic type of immune response. Um, things where you get catabolic, like you're breaking down bone, osteoporosis, breaking down muscle tissue, and nerve tissue, getting into injuries, those are more sort of a catabolic immune system going on. And so, but it's always under the surface. You, you, you think you're fine on the outside, but these are things going on underneath the surface. You get certain clues sometimes under stress. You might get a cold sore under stress, or you might get hot and sweaty under stress, or you might get allergies under stress. So there's your, your body's always giving you clues that there's something underneath the surface that you have to check on. There's something under the hood as well, something under the bonnet that needs to be taken care of. And the longer you don't, you ignore those symptoms, the longer you ignore those sort of outward signs that something's going on, the more chances you have of these all of a sudden you look on an x-ray and you sort of see what's going on and looking at you like, oh my God, I didn't even know that was there. But your body was giving you clues all the time, um, but you just ignore them. And so uh, yeah, we've seen that a lot these days. We've seen a lot of osteoporosis and a lot of um, arthritic conditions in the young generation a lot more. And it used to be an old person's disease arthritis, but not anymore. You're happening in your, in your teens, happening in your 20s, happening in your 30s. And some of those things is because we're ignoring fevers we're ignoring allergies we're ignoring gut problems because it's it's normal everyone has those things right but it's not normal there's an immune problem going on and if, if that persists you will get breakdown of your tissues fibrosis patients nerve traps the longer that the longer you ignore those things for, for the doctors and therapists that are helping these patients and particularly ones that are dealing with things like nerve entrapments and and fibrotic type presentations would it be fair to say that if we can catch this at the intake and understand a bit more about that patient's inflammatory profile and then perhaps be able to help them in the sort of earlier stages or support them through treatment um, to correct some of that, would would we expect them to do better with treatment, I guess, maybe a, potentially a, a better outcome faster and and possibly even not redevelop it as quickly? Yeah, that's the idea. And, and, and the majority of clients, when you have that patients and you get you do your hands-on work, you do your soft tissue, you do your shock therapy, they get better. And so that's what you want. You want people to get better quite quickly from your treatments. And that's when you know that they probably just have an adhesion problem. They just have a fibrotic problem. But then there's some clients, maybe 20, 30% of your client load, that don't get better. In fact, sometimes get worse, right? And so um, those are the clients you should be thinking, is there something else going on? Is there an immune component that is, is, is going on? Is there a blood sugar problem that's going on? Is there a hypoxia problem that's going on? Because they're not getting better from normal treatment. They're not getting better like Mrs. Jones did two weeks ago. She got she, she got out of bed just like that. It was not amazing. There was some like Mr. Jones got out of bed. He felt like crap. Right? Why is that Why is that going on? Then? It's not because of your treatment. Your treatment is still the same. It's just that the patient themselves has an underlying inflammatory problem going on, which isn't just an adhesion it's an underlying inflammatory problem. And so you can look for these things because when your clients come in, they'll complain of allergies, they'll complain of fevers, they'll complain of, complain of infections, or have their tonsils removed as a kid, they'll have their appendix removed as a kid. All these things in that in their histories 
that you can sort of look through your intake form and sort of see these things in the history and sort of say, this person probably has an underlying inflammatory immune problem going on from their past that is going to present as a chronic pain, a chronic inflammation, chronic neuropathy, chronic fibrotic tissues going on. And so you can catch these things as the intake form because I'm pretty sure every, every osteopath chiropractor, we have what's called a review of symptoms where we, uh, you can sort of cross off certain things like symptoms like Hashimoto's, like Crohn's disease, yeah. like allergy. They actually have, you have an intake form which tells, gives you clues that there is an underlying immune process going on. We tend to ignore those things because we go after the pain, we go after the dysfunction, we go after the muscle tissue. Um, that's where it's presenting, not where it's coming from. And so there are clues in your intake form all the time that you can actually sort of say, okay, this person probably has an underlying inflammatory immune component because they have Hashimoto's, because they have brain Um, Maybe I should address that at the same time of looking after the adhesions, looking after their tissues, but maybe I can sort of incorporate some other things that go after their stealth infections, go after their hypoxia, uh, go after their inflammatory components that are going on. Yeah. To run alongside and, the treatment. And if we can catch that um, early, what's the next step? What can we do? Because um, I, I guess my the feedback that I've had from people that have gone into functional medicine pathways um, externally, yeah. it can be it can be a fairly lengthy process sometimes. And, and believe me, being in, in the functional world, 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 world for the last many years, um, it can be expensive. It can be a lot of testing and it can be a lot of supplements like, uh, uh, involved. And I've kind of shied away from that sort of side of things. I don't think because I'm more focused on immune issues. Uh, I'm not focused on hormones and digestive issues. I'm actually focused on if fibrosis is an immune event, let's just focus on the immune system. If hypoxia is an immune event, let's just focus on the immune system. And so if you were to just ask simple questions about someone's immune system and just focus on that, um, then you give out less supplements because you're more focused, maybe about two, three, four supplements. And I think you've experienced this yourself where you're only giving out two, three, four supplements, which are running alongside your hands-on technique, your shockwave therapies, and they do get better quicker and faster. And the problem doesn't tend to come back because you're actually going after the root of the problem rather than actually the symptom of the problem. Um, and so this is what you're, you're going to sort of start this process where you ask a few more questions in your intake form, in your consult form, about their immune system. Think questions like, do you get allergies? Do you get itchy skin? Do you get mast cell activation? Do you get histamine responses? Do you get fevers? Are you in an autoimmune state? Do you have an autoimmune condition? These are all signs that there's an underlying inflammatory immune problem. And they're, but they're all different types of immune situations. You can give out certain supplements. If you give out fish oil as a chiropractor, if you give out vitamin C as a chiropractor, it will rate it right. Uh, if you're giving out certain anti-inflammatories as a chiropractor, we're just changing those those supplements to go after the immune system rather than go off pain. Um, and so that's how you can incorporate this in a much quicker, faster, easy way of implementing this into practice. Not, not really a function of this other things where you have to give out and set up three or four tests, give out two bags of supplements. That's not the way, I don't think that's the way we should go about this. Uh, just focus on people's immune issues. And do you have a, a referral network or a, um, a, a next step for doctors and therapists that, that you know can catch these patients that, that want to be able to help them and, and get them that, that care? Because I'm sitting here listening to you talking about this and I'm my head's ticking over thinking of the patients that that could sort of benefit from something like this um but is there some way that we can we can send them or is there is there some some some, some sort of next step i guess yeah there is and uh, and it's, it's true once once you start seeing things you're going to find that every single one of your clients are coming to your room with chronic pain and chronic inflammation they have an immune problem and so you're going to start seeing these things much more in your practice. you're going to have a ton of patients in your practice that actually have immune issues. And you think, oh my God, what do I do with these clients? But if you, if you just implement a simple step-by-step -step process, we run mentorship classes. Innateimmunity.com is how we sort of run our mentorship classes. And we run these 12-week programs where you learn about the immune system, you learn about how you, uh, how do you go off the fibrosis, how do you go off the neuropathy by sort of attacking their immune system rather than attacking their symptoms. Um, and so we have, we have mentorship programs that you want to do that. So basically, um, um, everyone thinks that they should become a functional medicine doctor to learn to learn this stuff, and you don't have to, right? Um, and so you don't need to do a twelve-month functional medicine course, um, and because they're quite expensive, right? And implement all these new programs into your into your office. 
it's really all about sort of um, um, as you as you're working with the clients with software or with hands-on techniques or with the car by dancing about. You just ask certain questions about the immune system. You give out two or three supplements that you have in the office. It's basically a simple way of actually in, uh, bring in functional medicine principles into your, into your already existing practice. You gain more income. Um, and, and some people actually go on and just become, and just do functional medicine consults from their house or, or from their home and just do online Zoom consults like I do. And so some people take it even further. Um, but in the US, I'm, I, you know, I, I practiced in the US for 20 years, and this is where I learned about functional medicine more in the US. And so I developed programs in the US that sort of practitioners, osteopaths, chiropractors, whoever uh, can actually jump on these programs and they can actually sort of jump on these funnels where they can actually learn these things quicker, but also give out certain supplements, give out certain testing if they need to uh, refer their clients onto these things. Um, I'm hoping that, that most of these practitioners actually learn these things for themselves and they can do it themselves. Um, but uh, in the short term, sometimes they need a bit of help, need a bit of mentoring in the short term to really fix that. But um, you know, we'll have funnels established um, and uh, to, to, to people can really press on and see where they can go um, with these things. Yeah. All right. Well, um, that was pretty cool for me because uh, i i do geek out about this uh about this stuff so that was uh that was fascinating so thank you Stuart. no worries thank you